What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So today I want to give you more of an economic update and talk about how a devastating event could be happening in just the next seven days. Now a lot of people are not completely aware of what's going on so I want to address this situation and how you can start preparing. Now we've talked about this devastating event you know, multiple times over the past handful of months. I started talking about this back in, in June of 2022. And so there's no shortage of information out there on this. However, some people and even mainstream media is uh, misinterpreting what's actually going on. So we're gonna address that in today's video. Now, first, what is this devastating event and how is this going to impact us in the next seven days? Well, the next seven days, what we're gonna see is the start of the railroad strike. Now, I just wanna be uh, very clear on this. The railroad strike is not supposed to occur uh, at the earliest until December 9th. And this is from four main railroad unions. Now, with that said, they can actually, um, we're gonna be impacted by this potential strike seven days in advance, okay? So that would be in a week. In a week, it is uh, December 1st. We're that close to December. And in eight days, it will be December 2nd, and that could be the start of rail prep. Now, I say this because the four unions have already rejected the tentative agreement that was put in front of them by the railroads and uh, the presidential committee. Now, they've rejected this, and it's because of their rejected votes that we could see a legal strike as early as December 9th. Well, technically, it's actually December 5th, but the two unions that could actually strike on December 5th decided they will push back and join the larger union, which can't strike until December 9th. So that's why there's so many different dates there. Now, what I want to remind you of, though, is that we could see uh, the negotiations uh, get a little bit closer. We could see a deal get done between now and then. Here's the problem, though. The railroad union and the railroads have been negotiating this uh, contract for roughly three years. Three years, and they still have not come to an agreement. So when people tell me, ah, no big deal, they'll reach an agreement. No, it is a big deal because they have yet to do so in three years. Now, I, and as of right now, they still don't have a deal. They still don't have a deal. We're on, we're on a, a holiday a weekend, right? Today is Thanksgiving as of shooting this video. Um, so happy Thanksgiving. Um, but today's Thanksgiving, tomorrow's Black Friday. A lot of people don't work tomorrow on Friday either. They'll most likely take the entire weekend off. So for the next four days until Monday, um, Monday, uh, November 28th, we still probably won't have much of an agreement, right? And then it gives us that much closer to try to reach a deal, which I don't think we're going to get. Now, let's, let's kind of unwrap this a little bit. The railroads are blaming workers for being too greedy. That the workers want, um, they want more uh, time off. They want less restrictions as to when they can take this time off. They also want um, higher wages. Okay. Now, I honestly don't think the, the workers are being too greedy. I think they're asking for what they deserve because, and just, just let me paint this picture. If railroad workers just accepted whatever they were given, they wouldn't be where they're at today. It's the same thing with, uh, you know, pilots. It's the same thing with, uh, you know, anybody that works in the, the aerospace industry, right? People would get screwed if the businesses were like, no, nah, we're not gonna give you that. Here's all you can get, you have to accept it. So a little bit of pushback is probably a good thing at this point. Now, workers are blaming the railroads for just being too uh, profit hungry. That all they care about is profit. They don't care about the needs or safety of their employees and well, kind of shows. And to this day, again, we still don't have an agreement with the 12 unions. We have to have every single union, all 12 agree for this uh, to this tentative agreement or else there will be a potential strike. As of right now, there will be a potential strike. Now, could we see the two sides reach an agreement before December 9th? The answer is yes. However, I just don't see it, okay? I can see Congress stepping in 
and preventing a strike, that's something I can see. But as far as uh, you know, them reaching agreement, I don't know. I don't know if this actually happens. Now, here's what you need to keep in mind. In the next seven or eight days, uh, it'll most likely start on um, the second of December. Is what we're going to call what they call rail prep, and this is when railroads will take the seven days prior to a potential strike, and they will start pulling stuff off the rails. Now, they will have to pull off all hazardous material. Um, this is something that they cannot just leave sitting on the rail um, the railroads, because if a if the workers decide to strike on strike day, and let's say the strike at midnight or one or two, three, four, doesn't matter the time, but if the train is still going, guess what? They have to stop it where it stands, get out, they're done, they're on strike. Then they join the picket lines. That would be a problem, that would be a disaster for uh, you know, pretty much the US economy, but it would be a disaster for people that are gonna go and steal the products. And again, these are hazardous materials, so obviously we need to pull them off the rail, uh, railroads. They will also start taking chemicals off the railroads as well. Now, here's the big thing with that. This includes things like gasoline and diesel. Well, guess what? We already have a diesel shortage. We already struggle and there's delays when it comes to getting gasoline. So guess what this means? Probably a bigger shortage and more delays. This will likely mean price increases are gonna happen even faster. So that's a problem there. One piece of information that I wanna give you though, which I thought was very interesting when I was reading this just the other day, is that for chemicals, the railroads have to have all chemicals off the railroad. They cannot be on rail within 96 hours prior to a strike on strike day. This means four days in advance, they have to pull off all chemicals, okay? That, that's gonna be devastating. Now, just think what this does for you know, moving fuel uh, around our country, right? If, if that cannot be on the railroads, it has to be locked up, right? So we're gonna lock up gasoline and we're gonna lock up you know, diesel, right? Probably heating oil. It's, it's a huge concern. This is very concerning, especially at this time when we do have these, these shortages that we are trying to overcome. Also, one of the other things that gets halted is coal. Now, many people use coal to heat their homes. That's a problem. If we cannot use coal to heat our homes, then what do we do, right? Most people are using coal. Coal is one of the big, big things that we need. Well, there's a shortage in Europe, right? Where we have issues here in the US, a shortage technically isn't one of them, but if we can't get those things moved from one uh, part of the country to another, again, there's gonna be certain spots of the country that are gonna feel the impacts of this rail strike more than others. Another thing, okay, food is gonna get halted as well. This includes things like grain, corn, corn syrup, and even flour. So if you're thinking there's you know, some products that you normally buy haven't been uh, at the store lately, well, this is only gonna make things worse, not better. It's gonna get worse. Okay. Now I've talked uh, a lot about, you know, what the halt of rail transportation uh, would do and, and how it would cause a, you know, a surge in prices. Now, what you need to keep in mind is that when we move products from truck or from uh, rail to truck, it's going to get more expensive. It's also going to create delays. It's going to be slower. Another thing that you need to understand is we're not going to see price increases surge all across the United States. And I think this is where a lot of people are, uh, and, and I'm probably you know, at fault on this as well. But one of the things that you need to keep in mind is, depending on how close the distribution center is to the, the, the rail yard. So for example, there's, there's a couple different ones. Um, there's the Metropolitan um, you know, Chicago, or that uh, it's a very big rail yard. Um, there's also the, the Bailey yard up in um, you know, New England. This thing's like 3,000 acres or something, a massive rail yard. If, you ha if there's a company that has a distribution center that's fairly close to that, and it, the, the, that's where mo the majority of the products are gonna be, well, it's not that expensive, more expensive to move a product from there to the distribution center. However, if we get the, go from Bailey's to, um, 
let's say the there's one in uh, California, uh, Roseville Rail Yard, I think is what it's called. Um, now, if, if we're closer to that one, right, and that's where all the products are at, it's not gonna be that much more expensive. But if we're trying to transfer products from uh, the Bailey Yard over to the Roseville Yard in on the West Coast in California, that's gonna be very expensive. Because guess what? If the railroads get shut down, how do we move the products? It's by truck. Truck is a lot much, much less efficient, it's more expensive, and it's gonna require more workers. That is a huge, huge problem. So, one thing I can tell you though, is I know a lot of people are getting, uh, you know, they're really questioning how bad this could potentially be. Well, what we know is this would cause about a $2 billion per day loss um, to our economy. Now, what some are expecting is if we go on strike, the strike would be for about three days. And if we go on strike for three days, this would be about half a percent of the US GDP, is how much we would lose. So again, that's what's so frustrating about this is we don't know what's gonna happen. Like we could seriously uh, be on, we could go on strike. Uh, we could see the railroad workers uh, go on strike. This is about 115,000 workers going on strike, um, you know, sometime in December, right before uh, Christmas. And this is not the time, we never wanna go on strike, but honestly, this is not a good time to go on strike when we're just coming back from this this two year crisis that we've been in as well. So right now there's a lot of question marks. I just wanted to fill you in on what's going on because yes, this is bad news, but it could eventually get worse. One thing I can tell you though, we have to prepare. This means if we're worried about gasoline shortages or delays uh, from getting gasoline from the, the, rail, yard, the rail yard to a, a distribution site, the thing that you need to keep in mind is, well, maybe just fill up your vehicle a little bit early. Don't wait till it gets on E, fill it up at least half tank, fill it all the way up, just be prepared there. Make sure you have enough food in your pantry. Uh, I know I'm gonna get this question a lot is, well, what if we just don't have money? Well, you gotta do what you can, right? If you can borrow money so that you can secure some type of safety net, I'd recommend do that. Uh, I, I use credit cards all the time, I love them. I absolutely, I live by them. But at the same time, I can pay it off every single month. If you're not in that position, and I know most people are not, don't don't bank on credit cards, right? Don't do that. Uh, that's gonna put you in a tougher financial situation in the near future, probably in the next couple months. So that is my advice to you. And obviously if you can make a little bit extra money, that would be a good thing to do as well. But I just wanted to fill you in on that. I was kind of just sitting down, uh, you know, right before Thanksgiving, uh, you know, dinner with my family, thought, you know what, I just wanna, I just wanna come on here and, and give you this little bit of insight. I, uh, you know, took a bunch of notes, uh, you know, here on my iPad, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to provide that to you guys. You know, one thing that I, I, uh, I got a message on earlier today was uh, somebody said that they were thankful that, you know, I come on here every single day and I do an update. I give you guys a uh, you know, peace of mind that, yeah, there's somebody looking out for you. Um, I know sometimes I don't give the, the greatest uh, you know, information. Sometimes uh, it's not the clearest. Um, and a lot of times it's not the best as far as this is good news. But I come on here because I'm doing the research myself. A lot of times I'm just doing this research so that I know what companies to invest in into the stock market. That's why I do it. But, you know, do I need to make a video on it? Absolutely not. Do I do it because I love it? Yes, and I do it because I know a lot of people can benefit from it. So that's uh, what I got for you guys today. Just wanna thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your Thanksgiving uh, day and Thanksgiving uh, weekend as well. Uh, again, do me a favor, just take two seconds, go ahead, hit that like button, click that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys on the next one.